The Mr. B situation has been ongoing actively for the past couple of weeks, and I was debating on when to make this video because there are still a bunch of videos accusing Mr. Beast of different things coming out every single day. And you also have this like whole bucket of like slop YouTubers that just like pump out video after video on Mr. Beast. This whole situation started to blow up when a former Mr. Beast video made an expose on him. And this was posted after Chris Tyson was exposed for talking inappropriately with minors which is a whole other topic for a whole other video. Chris being exposed was probably the catalyst for all the other accusations on Mr. Beast and his team. So him being exposed and being on the Mr. Beast team like hit a weak point on Mr. Beast. So people are like, all right, now he's vulnerable. We can attack him now. Now, there have been a lot of accusations on Mr. Beast in the past, but those accusations barely had any merit, so nobody really believed them. But now with Chris Tyson facing all these allegations, it gave a lot of people a platform to speak about their experiences working with Mr. Beast and interacting with him. But the first video with huge accusations against Mr. Beast was a video made by a former Mr. Beast employee. Now, the employee has a YouTube channel that goes by Dogpack404. He currently has two videos accusing Mr. Beast of a lot of bad things, his newest video being a lot heavier than the first. And uh, his name doesn't lie because he's packing a lot of accusations in these hour-long videos. Like I said before, there have been a ton of videos on the subject talking about the accusations on Mr. Beast. Take more Pegasus as an example. He has nine consecutive videos on Mr. Beast and his team consecutive, back to back with each video on Mr. Beast himself having over a million views. He found the infinite money glitch. The cow is already dry, but he's still milking it. Each thumbnail too, making it seem like it's the end of Mr. Beast, yet there's a video right after it saying that it's actually done. It's the end of him. He's gonna die. Anyways, onto the accusations. On Dogpack's first video, he accuses Mr. Beast of the following. Rigging his videos, faking his videos, promoting gambling to kids, hosting illegal lotteries, creating fake signatures, and not giving out some of the prizes that he promises. Mr. B says in multiple podcasts that he doesn't fake his videos, and that it would be very easy to pump out those videos if he were to fake them. Mr. Beast in these podcasts tries to come off as a genuine and honest person, someone who doesn't fake their videos. Also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is non-scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. However, Dogpack makes the accusations that he, in fact, does fake the videos as well as rigs the videos. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him died through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. He even says that a raccoon in one of Mr. Beast's videos was a paid actor, which is an interesting accusation. I mean, I don't think that necessarily makes a video fake. Just more interesting and exaggerated. Uh, same thing with the bus wheels. I mean, it doesn't necessarily make the entire video fake. It's just them using CGI to over-exaggerate something. As with the abandoned city being fake and Mac being an actor and a secret employee, that's a lot worse. When I saw those videos of him being brought back again and again, I knew for a fact that he was an employee. There's no way he kept bringing the same contestant over and over again. He was definitely an employee there. Dogpack also accuses Mr. Beast of rigging the results of the videos, which is not good. No fucking shit! He says that a lot of the contestants in some of the videos are actually employees of Mr. Beast, which is actually proven with screenshots next to the person showing who they actually are and that they actually work for Mr. Beast, which I guess isn't like super bad. Like, he does say he has random contestants in there. Even if they are employees, they're still competing in the competition. And he's not giving those employees, like, special benefits if they do compete in the challenge, I don't think. He also accuses Mr. Beast of faking the 100 boys versus 100 girls video, rigging it to the point where the girls eventually win in the end. And that even though Mr. Beast rigs the games, so contestant wins, which is, I guess, a good thing. Other times people lose because of how much he rigged it. If you're ever in a Mr. Beast video, do not be his op. You have to glaze Mr. Beast so he rigs the competition in your favor. 
And you also have to act like a cartoon character for the content. Dogpack then accuses Mr. Beast of conducting illegal lotteries, which is way worse than all the other accusations that he made previous to this. This is wild because this is a crime. Obviously, I mean, it says it says it's illegal. It's called an illegal lottery. A federal charge for conducting illegal lotteries in North Carolina can have a penalty of up to two years in prison. In Mr. Beast's live stream of signing shirts, he conducted multiple illegal lotteries in that entire live stream. Multiple. Mr. Beast says something like, in the next two minutes, someone will get a bunch of money if they buy a shirt. And then he would push the timer again, like he would forget about it. And then once he like remembers it, it was like, okay, in the next 30 seconds, someone will win a prize. Like he has like dementia or something. We're going to put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah. So... All right, so the newest order. In 30 seconds, we are going to put $1,000 in your package. You know who else suffers from dementia? This claim that Dogpack makes is actually proven in the live stream because he actually says it. There's clips of him saying it. This also promotes gambling, and a lot of Mr. Beast viewers and fans are most likely minors. I wouldn't be surprised if there was an embryo inside of their mother's womb watching Mr. Beast videos with an iPad. People on Reddit also claimed that they won a prize on Mr. Beast live streams but didn't actually get their reward which could potentially be fake because a lot of people said that they've been scammed by mr beast and didn't get their reward without any kind of evidence just source trust me bro this person is still tweeting about it to this day i mean this is serious dedication to be tweeting multiple times throughout two and a half years asking for your mr beast prize that's more dedication than chris tyson has inappropriately talking to minors a Mr. Beast employee was also caught using Mr. Beast's signature, leading the people who bought that shirt to believe that it was actually Mr. Beast who signed it. This could be forgery, but he probably got permission from Mr. Beast himself to use the signature. I mean, look how quick and flawlessly he creates Mr. Beast's signature. He has experience. The rest of Dogpack's video is mainly talking about how unhealthy Mr. Beast's chocolate bars are and how he promotes them as healthy. Now that was Dogpack's first video on Mr. Beast. He ended up making a second video, which goes even harder on the accusations and has way worse accusations than the first video he made. If the last video was a bullet, this video is a nuclear bomb. But before I go into that video, one of Mr. Beast's employees, who goes by Chucky, who works on the ideas and thumbnails for him, came out debunking some of Dogpack's claims, and this dude wrote an entire essay. He starts off saying that he was the one who decided to fire Dogpack because of his erratic behavior, saying that Dogpack also only worked there for less than a month and that he wasn't even present in most of the videos that he talked about. He mainly debunks things that no one really cares about. I mean, like, he, he says that the raccoon wasn't actually a paid actor. Bro, I don't think anyone cares. I think Dogpack and Chucky clashing against each other for really minuscule things like using a raccoon as an actor on one of the videos is kind of it's kind of pointless. He also says that Dogpack's claims of Mr. Beast only allowing friends, mutuals, or family members is untrue, which kind of falls flat because of that video that he made on the 100 boys versus 100 girls using employees. He also stated that the giveaways aren't faked and all participants got their rewards. This is kind of like he said, she said. There's no evidence backing most of these claims up. He replies by debunking his debunks with another essay. I'm gonna have a brain aneurysm. It's an interesting read, although I kind of skimmed through it and nothing really was that important because again, he was debunking his debunks and Chucky's debunks were very minuscule. Now onto Dogpack's most recent video. Now the video mainly talks about one of Mr. Beast's employees being mistreated and Mr. Beast's team hiring a sex offender. The video starts off with Dogpack interviewing a former Mr. Beast employee who goes by Jake Weddle. Now you may have seen this person in older Mr. Beast videos, I know I have. During the video, Weddle talks about how it was like working at Mr. Beast. He even talked about like the fakest video he's ever been in. The fake video being a prank where Mr. Beast put a meteor on Weddle's car and uh, another employee's car, which Weddle knew about and everyone else knew about, his mother as well, who he called during the video. What are the chances that your car gets crushed by a meteor? Not only that, Marcus's car, another former Mr. Beast employee, had his car right next to Weddle's and also had the same size meteor hit his car. 
and there's no debris anywhere like it doesn't even look like it like actually crushed the car it looked like a, a meter was taking a nap on his car Weddle also said that he worked with someone on the mr beast team who has a son but was unfortunately getting less pay than him which is really weird paying someone more than someone else even though the guy has a child which he eventually brought up to the higher ups they both ended up getting fired because of it and getting severance checks which is incredibly sad imagine being fired because you're like i i want to get paid more or i'm done and they're like all right so they fire you but not only you they fire the other guy as well how dare you want a raise I'm not gonna take that. And then they just banished them to the shadow realm because they wanted more pay. That's really weird. Whittle was also in a scrapped video as well where he was going to spend a hundred days in solitary confinement. He had a bunch of items. He would have to choose what items to get rid of every couple of days. Kind of like the video that he made two years ago. And the reason why the video was scrapped was because of how poorly it went. Widow said that the lights were constantly on and were never turned off. If you see Mr. Beast's solitary confinement video that he made two years ago, the lights were off at night. It looks like they learned their lesson. The lights constantly being on eventually led him to having sleeping problems because of it. And when he asked to have the lights off, the crew said no because it would ruin the time lapse. That is insane. A lot of people are saying this is a war crime as well. Uh, everyone in the comments are like saying like, oh, this is a war crime. This is breaking the Geneva Convention. But I, I don't think that is. Uh, I looked it up. It says that keeping the lights on someone is not a war crime in and of itself. During this, Weddle did have the choice to leave whenever he wanted, albeit he was pressured into continuing. So every time he would want to leave, he was pressured into continuing and to give them more content. I feel really bad for him for having to endure this. He was also made to run a uh, full marathon for 10 grand which is an insane thing to do on someone who isn't doing well mentally because the lights are constantly turned on and uh, him not knowing what time it is. He also had a choice on whether or not to do it, but was also pressured into doing it for the video by Mr. Beast. Again, they wanted the content. So he ended up getting blisters from it and then he ended up quitting the challenge because of it, which is awful. Near the end of the video, there was also rumors of sexual misconduct inside of the Mr. Beast team. There was also a Mr. Beast employee who goes by Delaware. And this guy is on the registry for doing very bad things with minors. He's supposedly nicknamed Delaware because he isn't allowed to go back to Delaware, which is insane. Imagine being nicknamed the place where you committed a horrible crime. It's also weird to have an employee that's a registered sex offender, especially when the majority of your audience are minors. The last expose I want to talk about in this video is by another ex-employee of Mr. Beast. The ex-employee's YouTube channel goes by Ty Orr, and he was one of the people that would come up with the ideas. To keep the whole video short, he made an idea of an optical course on a huge whiteboard where people can pitch in their ideas, and Mr. Beast ended up actually making it into an actual video, allegedly, with the obstacles looking kind of similar to Ty's idea. This was the drawing that Ty made, and this is the obstacle course in one of Mr. Beast's videos that Ty is saying he copied his idea off of. That's kind of a stretch. The only thing that I see that they copied was the floating platforms and the hammers. Although in the drawing, they kind of look like mushrooms. I don't know why he drew maces in there. He was drawing a death course. Ty says that it's an exact replica. Does that remind you of anything you've seen so far? Does it remind you of anything you've seen remotely close to it? Or does it look like the exact same thing that I drew? The exact same thing that I pitched? everything not really the hammers are spread out they're not in one area um there's no monkey bars there's no maces like i kind of see the resemblance but it's a little bit of a stretch saying that it's an exact replica so he hasn't gotten paid for that idea that he said was stolen at the end of the video he said if you want to help me and get my money back i'll send up a gofundme and he set the gofundme goal for 1.7 million dollars what is that he wanted $1.7 million because of a drawing that my two-year-old cousin can make. Fortunately, he did hear the criticism in his comment section and shut down the GoFundMe. The Mr. Beast drama is still active to this day, with more accusations being made against him and his team, with a former romantic partner of his chiming in. I'm going to be posting 12 more Mr. Beast related videos in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. With each thumbnail saying, it's over, and it's finally done. So uh, expect that in the next couple of weeks. 
in the end, I don't think Mr. Beast will be heavily affected by this. I think it'd be a good idea for him to post about it and talk about all the accusations that's being made on him, but I don't think he'll be heavily affected by this. His most recent video was posted after the accusations was made, and it's still having over 100 million views with more likes than dislikes. Only time will tell. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I will see you in the next video. Peace.